Hi everybody, how's it going today? Happy New Year. Uh, just got done uh, celebrating Christmas with my family. We didn't last week, just the way it worked out. So we uh, did that here this or this evening, I guess. I uh, thought I'd make a quick Q&A video. There was a lot of questions uh, on the on Wednesday's video. Just, uh, yeah, I wanted to answer a few of those questions quickly. The first one uh, was uh, if, if cow managers are main herd record keeping program and it's not. So we've, uh, for the last uh, 12 years, I guess, or since we've been here, we've used Dairy Plan, which is uh, from GIA. Uh, that's our parlor company. And that's uh, worked well for us. That program has some limitations. And we recently have started to make the change over to Dairy Comp. Uh, Dairy Comp has more, more, uh, yeah, more, th more things we can do with the program, more uh, information available to us, and uh, a lot of uh, good support. So we've, um, it's kind of been a little bit challenging the last few weeks, and it's going to be a little bit challenging going forward, just because some information didn't uh, transfer over as well as I would have liked. But we're about three weeks in now using Dairy Comp, and it's. Um, yeah, slowly you start to learn this program little by little every day. Just takes a little time to get used to something new. Uh, I did want to, I could show you guys quickly uh, how, how Dairy Comp looks, I guess, and how Dairy Plan looked. And I, I, I pulled up one cow, 3883, one of the older cows in the herd. Uh, one of the things that sucks now that we're switching programs is a lot of the older information from our cows is not being transferred over and... It's uh, pretty difficult to manually transfer over all that information for the amount of cows we have. So, so this is uh, what dairy comp looks like. Uh, it's uh, not a whole lot different. A lot of so this is information from our current lactation, and then just some different information up here. You can with dairy comp, you have a lot of uh, different things you can do. You can make just about any kind of list you want showing. Just about anything you could think of that's uh, related to uh, to cow data, and it, this is how dairy plan would look for an individual cow. And I was just I, I clicked on this one cow. She was on the top of the list on one of the pens that I pulled up on the dry cow pen actually, and she so she is dry currently. Uh, her number is three eight eight three, and you guys are probably not gonna be able to see this very well, but. She is, uh, I think it was an eighth lactation cow. I think she's uh, nine years old. And I was just looking back through her history. I don't do this very often, but this cow is nine years old and has never been treated for a single illness in her entire time on our farm. So she was born in 2013 and until today. And even most, most lactations, she was pregnant after the first breeding, which is... Uh, Pretty incredible as well so let's look through it here first second third fourth fifth sixth up to her sixth lactation she was pregnant off of one breeding then her seventh it took three breedings eighth it took two and then her ninth it took three again and she's dry now so she'll have her be her ninth calf so pretty incredible these are the kind of cows that we want in our herd so it's a uh, old cow and a cow that uh, never comes up with health issues that's just uh yeah Awesome cow. Uh, it'll be, yeah, we'll, we'll still use Dairy Plan for the time being just because we don't have a lot of these records being moved over. Second question that I wanted to address was uh, somebody asked how what percentage of our cows are bred to beef, what percentage are bred to Holstein. So about 85% uh, of our cows are bred to beef and about 15% of our heifers are bred to beef. And the rest is bred to assorted Holstein semen, or if it's a brown Swiss, we breed all of our brown Swiss to assorted brown Swiss semen. And the same goes for red Holsteins. We breed all of our red Holsteins back to red sorted semen, red Holstein sorted semen, because we we like to have some of those different colors in our herd. Our uh, Currently our matings are, somebody asked how we are making those decisions, so our matings are based off of predicted genetic values of the mother and father of the of the cow essentially or the heifer and then once she becomes a cow it, it also takes into consideration her some of her production information I guess we used to do genomic testing years ago we did it for a few years and stopped and I after the new year my plan is to start doing that again in our heifers and uh, 
not planning to do all of our cows, but starting our heifers again, then start making breeding decisions in our heifers based off of uh, actual genomic information. And then slowly all of our cows will also have that information as those heifers become cows, uh, I guess, in theory. So that's uh, kind of the plan going forward. Uh, like to get a little bit more accurate with our breedings, I guess, as was my thinking. And uh, like to target our best cows with uh, some of the better semen that's available. So I'll uh, probably talk about that more in the next uh, couple months because I'll, we'll start taking uh, tissue samples here in the next couple months. And I'll show you guys that uh, once we get to that. The next question was, uh, how do we, if a cow gives an alert, how do we find her? And uh, it's a good question. So uh, all of our cows are, are in our program, our uh, record keeping program as being in a specific pen. And that also transfers over to the cow manager program. So we can see uh, if a cow gives an alert, it'll show which pen she's in. Then we go to that pen, look for her. Uh, we still have to look for her manually in that pen, obviously. But it's uh, be a pen of 170 cows roughly. So it's uh, typically not too difficult to find a cow unless she's in the, not in the right pen. Then it does become a little bit of a challenge. But that's, uh, I mean, it can happen, but doesn't happen often. And when we do uh, milk testing once a month, there's usually a handful of cows that'll be in the wrong pen for whatever whatever reason. Maybe a number got wrote down wrong or moved to a wrong pen by accident. But once a month that gets sorted out, so it's not a doesn't ever get out of control, I guess. So it's usually not too difficult finding cows. The last question I wanted to uh, wanted to uh, explain a little bit further was how the program actually just from the ear tag and the cow's ear how it it. Uh, comes up with all the information on her eating time, rumination time, or activity. Uh, the temperature is a sensor that's actually in the sensor and it's measuring temperature on the outside of the ear so it will fluctuate more than her actual body temperature but it will give you a good idea of, uh, of changes. You know, if it, uh, if it changes based on, or compared to the herd, if it changes based on her baseline a lot, then you get an alert and that is pretty accurate. But as far as uh, how it gets that information, it's really based on how the cow moves her ear. There's uh, specific motions for when she's ruminating or eating. And then obviously if she's not active, she's not moving around, around, not moving her ear, that would be not active. And they have an algorithm that figures that out and uh, then gives us that information on the program. And it's... Uh, it's adjusted for what part of the world you're in. So people using cow manager in the Netherlands or people using cow manager in New Zealand, their algorithm will be a little different than ours is here in the Midwest, which is uh, kind of interesting to think about. Cows have uh, a different way of, uh, of uh, acting or a different way of moving their ear in different parts of the world or different climates. So it's kind of interesting how that, uh, how that works and how they're able to really uh, upgrade or yeah, really uh, pinpoint the program to where you are and your cows so it's kind of interesting uh, somebody did ask if I could show a cow and heat or a heifer and heat and I I think I'll drive by the 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 heifer barn here quickly if I can find one I will show you guys I'm if I can't find one we'll have to do that in another video there weren't any other questions that I wanted to sp specifically address in this video but I Really appreciate you guys watching and uh, hopefully you all have a good new year and hopefully we'll see you in the next video. So I'm in our heifer barn here. I thought the best place to see some cows or heifers in heat would be in here. So around, there's two pens around this uh, vet room here. One on this side and then one on that side. These We're breeding in these two pens. There were, before I started talking and filming, there was two heifers that were kind of walking around with each other uh, and if these two in the back there the white one and then the one that's walking to the right there and then the one that's following her you see her kind of put her head up there they're both kind of sweaty also so I, I I haven't seen them quite jump on each other yet fully but I have a feeling that uh, one or both of those heifers are in heat if I, uh, if I wasn't talking on my camera or, or uh, walking through here in my uh, non-farm clothes, I think probably we uh, could have seen them uh, jump on each other. You see that 
So she's just about to jump on this white one here. So then, the white one is definitely in heat, I would say, and uh, I think the one that was just jumping on her, I would, I think she's also in heat. She's uh, pretty sweaty as well, or the fur is pretty sweaty. So I typically, uh, especially in our heifer barn here, our uh, our night herdsmen will uh, walk these pens at least once in the night to check for heats, and then during the day. Uh, one of our herdsmen will, the first thing he does in the morning or one of the first things is walk these pens, look for heats. And then they're typically uh, breeding here either uh, late morning or early afternoon. And then at that time they'll look for heats also as they're in this barn. And then on the cow side, because we do have the cow manager system, if they have uh, extra time, typically in the mornings they will check for heats. And otherwise, it's just uh, based on how much time they have, I guess. Because we do have the cow manager system, they have a little bit more flexibility in our main barns where in the heifer barn here, we have to physically see them in heat. Otherwise, we're not, we don't have any way to know if they were in heat or not. But heifers are typically, um, they'll show heats a lot easier. And uh, like those two heifers there, I'm pretty confident that they were both in heat. And they'll uh, more than likely breed those tomorrow. But uh, yeah, I wanted to just show you guys that quickly and we did, were able to see a couple heifers in heat there. But I uh, appreciate you guys watching and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next video.